Wow, wow, you're welcome. This is Aside Our Show on CCTV. My name is Premier Dinyami. And mine is Nana Tufu Boateng. Remember, we're still in the business of bringing you nothing but total entertainment right in the comfort of your homes. The show is brought to you by Vodafone and Vodafone says, together we can. Stay with us. We have an exciting show coming mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Don't go away. Coming up on the Upside Down Show, we have a conversation with media personality, broadcaster, master of ceremonies, media culture and tourism expert, KKD, Crazy Che Dakwa, on his beginning in the industry, growing up and so much more. Welcome back, welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show on City TV. And guess what? We're about to do the same thing over and over and over again. With a, a twist, you know? Of course. Yeah. I was going to leave the twist out. Mm -hmm. The element of surprise. Okay. <laughs> but can we be surprised? Well, our guest for today, you never know. You <laughs> never know. So, yes. Just be on your guard. Strap your seatbelts because you're in for a ride. All right? <laughs> no, we are even in for a ride. You know, this is an interview definitely. where we don't even know how it's going to be mm -hmm. like. The man who is coming is going to be sharing affairs. Mm -hmm. And um, this man needs no introduction now. He's as relevant as ever. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest for today is a media brand and culture specialist, corporate and entertainment host, event mm -hmm. producer. Ladies and gentlemen, the finest, Kwesiche Dakwa, the Dakwa. Please His help royal us. blackness. Welcome. His royal blackness. KKD. <laughs> <K -K> <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> majestically. Majestically. Yeah, 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 majestically. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Dakwa. How are you feeling, man? Oh, wow. Oh, I'm good say to you I'm that so anything can happen on tonight's episode. I'm so, so, yeah. so very ready for this. Welcome. No, you you, you look KKD. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yeah. Is that in the dictionary? Well, we have to make sure it's in the dictionary because when we say somebody's looking KKD, mm -hmm. I believe people know exactly what uh, Many years about. ago, um, Nana Kunedua Jim and Rawlings, a lovely lady, yeah. she says, KKD. <laughs> and then I looked at her and I said, Why do you say my name like that? She says, That sounds like Kukrudu. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> no, you can pass for that. Because <laughs> you're welcome. How are you? you I'm look very well. well. I'm very well, thank you. And you? Thank you. We are fine. What far is it? No far. <laughs> good to see you. Same oh, year, same year. So it's always a pleasure. Beautiful. It's always, always a pleasure. Beautiful. Always good to see but you. But how do you do it? You know, ever since yeah. we've known KKD, he is that fine gentleman. Mm -hmm. You know, you never disappoint when it comes to appearance. Yeah. You are always there. How do you do this? Oh, you you wear whatever you pick, and you focus on what work you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And you try and do the best you can every day. Try out and do all the good you can every day because you never know if you will make it to the end of the day. So you well. live every single day as if it were your last. Mm. You know, I would love to see your wardrobe because when it comes to, <laughs> um, I mean, going royal, you are there. When it comes to going western, being Ghanaian yeah. and all, you there's know. A, there's a couple of rooms in England. Probably an estate full of clothes. <laughs> there's a couple of rooms in England, in Ghana and in the U.S. No, I wow. believe that. Wow. I believe that. We should come shopping wow. in your closet. No, but I have more books. Yeah. We'll, go, we'll come to that. Yeah, we'll as, come to that. Yeah. fashion, I want to know how you maintain the looks. Because you've looked this way ever since. Oh, the if not better. The mm. melanin is a gift. Mm. I mean, if, if melanin were to be bottled and sold, it would cost more than oil, it would cost more than gold, it would cost more than diamonds. Mm. And we take it for granted because we were born with it. Wow. Also, now we're going to hear much more of this. You know, he's mm -hmm. so philosophical. You really need to pay attention <laughs> when he's talking to read in between the lines to mm. get what exactly he is trying to say. But hey, so the National Science and Mask is just ended. You know, yes. Prasak could it make no, it? No, Prasak made it. Okay. You know, everybody makes mistakes from time to uh -huh. time. Good people may do bad things. Bad people may do good things. Yeah. Teachers may make mistakes. Uh -huh. Students may make mistakes. Uh, there was a question which Prisek answered correctly, but mm -hmm. which was ruled wrong. Mm. I don't know why that happened. But, you know, um, when the referee makes a mistake, unless there's VAR mm -hmm. to check immediately, mm -hmm. it stands. Okay. So I'm sure that um, 
the referee will still be worrying about what little error they may have made. But the good thing is, congratulations to the winners because whoever come in the top two yeah. are really yeah. great. Yeah. And um, yeah. I'm proud of my school. Of course, and I'm sure you're equally proud of um, Prempe College Amount for coming from Asante. No, I'm proud of my school. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy for Prempe. <laughs> I'm on a dad yet, I'm a dad yet to the call. Mm. Well, 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 yeah. we respect that, you know. <laughs> we like that. But you see, let's let's you know everybody knows you. K -K. Not everybody. <laughs> Who doesn't know you? Some people. Somebody don't, doesn't know you. No, some people just came to town recently, and, and they don't. And know And some you. people didn't have a TV when they were children, so mm. <laughs> they're probably and, the only strangers in this side of town. They, they still don't have Android phones. <laughs> <laughs> they, somebody doesn't know you. You must never, you see, in this whole um, uh, work that we do, you can never assume that everybody knows, acknowledges, yeah. or appreciates yeah. you. Yeah. You must constantly strive to be the very best you can mm. because somebody may only be seeing you or hearing you for the very first, first time. time. You're right. And then there will be those two who may just not know you because they have only just arrived, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, like the old folks say, they be a crazy new for forever crew. <laughs> Johnny just gone. Exactly. Yeah. So, but but in addition to that, there are some people who generally have been around for years, but mm. have had their heads buried in the sand. Mm. I mean, that's why there are ostriches mm. in the world. Well, see, to be the finest man that you are today, <laughs> I really want to believe that your parents did an amazing job with you mm. when I'm you were fortunate. growing up. I'm very fortunate. Please take us back to when we were growing up. My parents, my mother and my father. My father is a Penin Kwesi Dakwa. Okay. From the house Ediana of Adansi Dumpuase. Mm. Adansi Dumpuase shares a, a little barrier with um, Adansi Formana. I think there should be one okay. city, really. There mm. should be Adansi Formana Dumpuase or Dumpuase Formana. And my dearly beloved mother, Ahima Ama Asukwache Dakwa, mm -hmm. she's the royal okay. because she comes from a royal family from the house of Yukuo of Adansi Abedjum. Mm. Adansi Abedjum is one of those lands that actually own the lands of Obuasi. Yeah. Mm. And Obuasi is where most of Ghana's gold comes from. Mm -hmm. So, what we say in Adansi, and she's told me this ever since I was a child because I was raised to be a chief. Okay. So I was taught tradition since I was a child. I was taught mm -hmm. to wear cloth from the age of six. I was taught how to greet when you go into a gathering. Little, little things like that. I'm left-handed. You know, they said all these things and they yeah. say because you use that to wipe your derriere, mm -hmm. which I think is really crazy because all wow. the hands are the same. So I learned most of these things from my mother. My father is the fun guy, you okay. know. He's the fun guy. He's the one who will, he will correct you and he will chastise you, but then he will find a way later to make you laugh. Okay. You know, my mother was a very serious person, mm -hmm. focused on culture and dignity. And my father um, focused on prosperity and hilarity. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So wow. I had a combination of both. So you are your parents' <laughs> son? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Do you have siblings? Yes. How many? My mother bore three males and three females. Okay. I'm the second child, but I'm the first man. That makes me the head of our family. Okay. Right. My dad remains the head of our family, but when my dad is traveled, then I'm the head of the family. Okay. So if there is any funeral that my dad has to attend in his absence, mm. I have to stand in for him. Mm. That is not to make my bigger sister any smaller because yeah. she's a matriarch, she's mm. a, a strong woman. Mm. But our culture makes the man the warrior. Yeah. And it is the warrior who must stand in front to face whatever is coming. Right. You don't put the lady in front yeah. unless she has um, chosen to do so herself okay. like Yas did. Mm. Awesome. Let, let's talk about education. Where did it start? How did you get oh, into Prosec? After Prosec, where did yeah, you go? I went to Datus Preparatory Primary School. Okay. Okay. Back in the days when I went to Datus, it must have been maybe one of the best experimental schools in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people wanted to take their kids to Datus because mm -hmm. of the French. Okay. The owner of the school was um, Richard Adwai Doetin, 
very nice man. Okay. And he had a headmaster called Mr. Ahlija. I remember them very well. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Ahlija was a very nice man, but very stern as well. And Mr. Adwai Doetin was very pleasant, very well-mannered, very well-dressed, very soft-spoken. So I went to Datus as a boarder. I made to understand when I was a kid that I was always playing music. I liked Nana Kwame Ampedu very much. Okay. And I, I sang nearly every song of Nana Kwame Ampedu. In mm. fact, my first ever stage performance was with PSK Ampedu and the African Brothers Band. Awesome. Wow. I was four years wow. old. No, you're wow. kidding me. Four years. Four years old. What did you know at four? At, at, the, time, <laughs> at the time, my community said I really could sing. I had a great voice, mm. I'm told. And uh, I'm told I was quite a pretty little boy. Well, you're a fine man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Datus is where I went, and mm -hmm. then from Datus, um, secondary school was Presecle Gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from Presecle Gone, it was um, the Institute of Journalism, because mm -hmm. I studied journalism. Right. Yeah. And then from the Institute of Journalism, um, next school was the, uh, the Hotel Management School, Ghana Tourist Board. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it was the um, GIMPA for okay. the marketing course. At the time, mm -hmm. I was at ABC Bro Limited, and then the Essential Marketing Skills course with Pricewaterhouse, and, um, and then I went to do my master's degree in film and television production mm -hmm. from London Metropolitan University. Now, and you, you sound like on radio. Why? <laughs> the, the, you know, you, you talk with a certain, a, a certain rhythm. Exactly, you know, yeah. And I, I just yeah. love the rise and fall of how, how you speak. Rise and fall is nice mm -hmm. everywhere, yeah. especially with the waves of the sea mm -hmm. and occasionally in bed too. <laughs> That's a doctor for you. But in, in the media, I mean, was this like a long-held passion yeah. or the media found you? Yeah, because um, I don't know when I actually started using excellence, mm. eloquence, elegance as my purpose. Right. My purpose in life is to be excellent in every work I do, mm. great or small, to be eloquent in every communication of mine, mm -hmm and to be elegant in my being and my club. Now, when I was a child, I'm told I spoke very well, spoke respectfully, but I spoke very well. Mm -hmm. And my mother and my father both speak very well, you know. And so you didn't have a choice but to make sure you spoke properly, yeah. right. you know. And, and through the speaking, it became evident that I was going to do something that was communications related. So when I was a child, people would ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I say, I want to be an ambassador. Mm. And an uncle of mine, Uncle A.V. Obing, he's a big brother of Uncle P.V. Obing. Okay. Mm. He told me one day, why do you want to be an ambassador? You can do better than that. Mm -hmm. You're brilliant. You can choose anything else. Because in Africa, you become an ambassador at the pleasure of the president, not because you're brilliant at anything. Mm. If the president likes you, it doesn't matter if you're a shoe shine or a cook in a hotel. He can make you an ambassador. Yeah. Mm. So strive for something where you have your competence and that will give you your name mm -hmm. and that name will look after you and your children and your children's children. Mm -hmm. Those are the words of Uncle A.V. Wow. So um, when I was a Presec, I was studying science, mm -hmm. but I liked literature so much. So I was reading the books of the literature students. Mm -hmm. I remember taking um, Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales mm -hmm. and learning so much out of it. I remember these lines are still stuck in my head because I would choose the ones that I love and keep them. Mm -hmm. He's a mean fellow who will let no man handle his lantern when it's just to light a candle. Yeah. He's lost no light, he's felt no pain. You have light enough, so why complain? So that's about, you know, like you taking your girlfriend out for a dance mm -hmm. and somebody else coming to ask her for a dance because you don't want to dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let her dance with somebody. After all, you are taking her home. Mm -hmm. Why are you worrying? <laughs> Someone just warming up for you. <laughs> But also, how did also. you become this fine MC? <laughs> no, because you know, back then, many mm -hmm. you know, what I was. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I mean, compared to you, yes, but compared to the amount of me, yeah, madam. You know, but you know, so growing up, I, I, we will hear of um, KKD. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when you mentioned KKD, mm -hmm. everybody knew who yeah. you were talking about. You know, you wouldn't ask of which KKD. Mm -hmm. you know, how were you doing your stuff? How did your name became I think it all, it all started with learning, learning. I had a desire to learn. Okay. You know, I yearned to learn. And then I learned so I could earn. And then once I earned, I realized earning alone was not enough. Mm -hmm. 
I wanted to do more than just earn because you get the money, you buy things or you put it in the bank. So I asked myself, what do I really want to do with this thing I'm doing? And I realized I wanted to be counted amongst the best in what I do, mm. not just in Ghana, but in the world. Okay. So I started looking and reading. I mean, in our time, there was no internet. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to go to the library yeah. mm -hmm. to read about people. Yeah. And then eventually, while I was at GBC, a fine man came to work for the USIS called Daniel McGaffey. Later, he became Ambassador McGaffey. Mm -hmm. And he became friends with me because he would listen to the radio and he said he loved what I was doing on radio. He loved the way I played high life and played hip hop and played other musical genres. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say genres. <laughs> so I play all these music genres. Yeah. And he just liked what I was doing. So he asked one of his staff to reach out to me and invited me over and we spoke. And he asked me what I wanted to do with what I was doing. And I said, well, I wanted to help to elevate the culture. And I think those words that I used really touched him and his wife mm. to elevate the culture. And he would ask me, how did I intend to do that? I must have been in my early 20s, yeah. you know, so I was waxing lyrical. I mean, some anime can be said with a and Gwasi Asemba, you can Yeah, but um, it made a lot of sense to him. Yeah. So a program came up called the Young African Leaders Program, where they select outstanding mass communicators from around the world, mm -hmm. and they go to the States for some sort of attachment. Yeah. Margaret Thatcher went on that program in Europe. Mm. Uh, I went on that program in Ghana. I later, I think, uh, was it later or before? Kweku Sichiado has also gone on that program before. Okay. So when I went on that program, I learned something in America they call your international professional counterparts. Mm. Mm. And I realized, but that's exactly what I was doing in Ghana. I was always looking for people who excelled in broadcast media and communications, people who excelled in public relations and advertising. I was learning about Saatchi and Saatchi whilst I was in Ghana and hadn't, you know, actually gone to live somewhere. I traveled, but I hadn't gone to live abroad. Mm. So they took it as a serious program. Whatever you're doing, seek out your international professional counterparts. Mm. Okay. So you are on radio as a presenter. You need to find your international professional counterpart in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. in Mozambique, yeah. mm. in Uganda, in Iceland and create your network mm. right. because your network is your network yeah. and that just opened my mind to this world where i could find all these people all of a sudden mm. and i could place my work next to theirs and see if i was doing well by world standards not by ghanaian standards mm. so mm. that is what spurred me on to this excellence which I think was always embedded in me. Mm. Now, you assume leadership role at a very young age. So, um, around 25, 26? 26, I was advertising manager at ABC Brewery Limited. But, you know, being a lead presenter at GBC is a key leadership role. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially yes. back then. Yeah. yeah. You know, because, because even up to now, GBC, is. nobody it will move. Is. I mean, yeah. they will not move anywhere That's for you to come in. So exactly. for you yeah. to be that. And, you know, huge. when I went into GBC, there were some really brilliant presenters. Yeah. Now, here I was, a 17-year-old kid who had been going to GBC and going on a program with Carla Jim and Bannerman, mm. and at 19, being hired as a guest artist. And, you know, when you're hired as a guest artist at GBC, you take it you have a job, mm -hmm. but it's really when you're fully confirmed that you have a job. Okay. It's at 20 that I got confirmed, but from 19, I was working at GBC. So you have all these exceptional performers who are either shift leaders or le leaders in a team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're playing the Black Stars, yeah. but there's a captain and there are senior players. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And you are essentially a junior player yeah. and you're the youngest employee in the whole corporation. But it's a huge deal. So what are you going to do to be recognized? Yeah. Now, I'd listened to all of them and I think they were brilliant, but I knew that I could write rhymes better than every one of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I could rhyme better than every one of them. Mm and I could rap better than every one of them. Okay. And I could mix records better than every one of them. But also when you were doing the highlights and, and I the could scratch club. better than every one of them. Okay. So I brought an art which was not accepted on radio at the time mm -hmm. into radio. Mm 
Okay. That's why I got suspended a number of times. I got suspended <laughs> for playing rap music. I got suspended for mixing records. I got suspended for scratching on air. No, you're a stubborn mm. child. <laughs> no, you know. Um, what, what, was this because you got tempted to play like you used to play at um, uh, um, Ka Hotel? Uh, on Jetty Chrome Hotel. No, yeah. not, not just because I used to play the way I played. You see, I was young. Mm. I was restless. And I was fearless. Yeah. Full of energy. They were mature. And they were still keeping in line with those things that the, um, the colonialists had set for mm, them. Okay. Play this kind of music. Play the documentary from Pate. Play the documentary from BBC. Mm. Dare not play anything that promotes your kind. Mm. Mm. You know, and yeah. even though it wasn't written on the wall for you to in read, fact, yeah. essentially that is yeah. what, what it was. We were in our own country, but busily promoting the work of the colonialist. Because mm -hmm. what exactly did GBC have against rap music? The only musical genre mm -hmm. which was made by people that looked like us. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, <laughs> let, me, let me get your thoughts on this. I mean, when you look at Ghana today and compare it to back then, are we making any progress as a nation? Because you toured the whole of the country, you know, with Miss Ghana doing all these kind of, you know, I mean, that was when you were in the elements, Meeting you know, and, and, and visiting Ghana. I love to see Ghana, you know. How would you um, assess Ghana today? Are we, are we growing as a nation? Are we retrogressing? What's we are growing as a nation. Okay. And the reason why I'll say we are growing as a nation is we have this upsurge of enthusiastic young talent. Mm -hmm. We have some really brilliant young people mm -hmm. who we, just, we should just unleash. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the reasons why I love my younger brother, Samens. Okay. You know. Oh, Papa. These days I must call him Papa. <laughs> the Papa, see. <laughs> you know, I love Samens because from his days at um, Joy FM, yeah. Samens is always looking out for talent. Yes. And it has nothing to do with experience or inexperience mm -hmm. you see i have this line in one of my raps which says experience is no substitute for genius experience mm. though gallant without talent is meaningless mm. see let us look for genius let's look for talent once we find that genius and talent we can curate and shape them mm -hmm. so that they can benefit and we too can benefit mm. sure there's so many brilliant young people in Ghana. Okay. If you listen to these young chaps doing this Comerica rap, if you listen oh, yeah. to Kwesiata, mm -hmm. if you listen to Kwabna Kwabna, mm -hmm. if you listen to R2Bs, you listen to Sarkodie, Akwabua. you listen to Manifest, Akwabua, you know, all these young chaps, Ephraim, yeah. um, mm -hmm. KK Fosu, mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you come to the one who played Wedding Car. Wedding Car never. Uh, Upanka. 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 Yeah. You see, you listen to all these people. Yeah. They are not the same mm -hmm. as Kwam, Nana Kwami Ampidu no. or the original Akwabwa or yeah. Ijako Onimo, yeah. Yeah. but they are great musicians too. Yeah. Too many times we're stuck thinking we want them to be the same mm -hmm. so we don't see their greatness. Mm. If they were the same, it wouldn't be nice. Yeah. We need their variety. Mm -hmm. They are not the same as Kojo Enchi. No. He, without a doubt, may be the greatest love song writer and singer in the world yeah. i mean i think that competition would be between kojo and and lana richie the two mm. of them yeah you know yeah. seriously yeah but we have all this talent mm -hmm. and then you look at sports look at our women's football team and what oh, yeah. they're able to achieve mm -hmm. i mean it looks like they're greater than the black stars at the moment <laughs> <laughs> we can one Emmy, yeah we have to pay them to more the ladies. so yeah. yes we have come forward and then the need for travel has been cut back by the availability of internet. Yes. So you can have a show here, and if people have internet, they can watch it everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I worry about the fact that we don't have regulators who are doing a good job for all of us. What do you mean? So let me use an enterprise which I understand very much, mm -hmm. broadcasting. Yeah. My area of specialization is only three, mm -hmm. media, brand management, culture and tourism. So let's use media. GBC. Who regulates GBC? And what are they really doing about regulating GBC? Mm. 
Is GBC for all of us in Ghana? Mm -hmm. Or is it just for a few? Well, is GBC for the politicians to use? Or is it to serve every citizen of Ghana? Is GBC to only serve the citizens of Ghana who have a voice? Or to look for those who are left behind and let their voices be heard as well? Mm. So our regulators, who are usually part of government, are failing us as a people. Same thing, who regulates the oil and gas industry? Who regulates the electricity corporation and the supplies of energy to us? Mm -hmm. Who regulates the water people? Who regulates services in this country? Mm -hmm. Because these regulators, they, they're gradually going to become like our judges. If you look in the Bible, there is no profession that has its own book in the Bible. Mm. Do we have farmers in the Bible? Mm -mm. Prostitutes? Mm -mm. Doctors? No. Judges? Yeah. We do. We do, right? So these regulators, they are the ones who make us know that this is good, do it, you get a carrot. Mm -hmm. This is bad, do it, you get a stick. Mm -hmm. okay. The regulation is lacking. Mm -hmm. When we were at GBC, yeah. we didn't even need an outside regulator. Mm -hmm. The controller of programs, Joe Kofi, mm -hmm. controller of programs assistant, uh, assistant controller of programs, I beg your pardon, Nick Adimado, okay. and assistant controller of programs, uh, Mr. Um, George Crabb. Mm -hmm. When you were doing your program, you saw them looking at you. In fact, when you slept at night and were thinking of songs to play, you woke up in your sleep because you saw them staring at you. <laughs> you saw them staring yeah. at you. Right. You know, no, 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 I can't play this song because of this thing they said here. Mm. Oh, I can't play this song because even though they didn't say this, this is what it means. Mm. Mm. You know, so that was there. And if we can get regulators who are doing their work right, mm -hmm. they will be the ones who will watch the garden grow, but they will make sure that as they watch the flowers to grow, they take out the weeds. Yeah. If not gradually, the weeds will outgrow the flowers wow. in the garden. Mm. And then the next generation of children will think the weeds are the flowers. Mm. Mm. So, so how do you find media today? Media today is great. I like okay. the fact that there are so many people in media. Uh -huh. And I like the fact that we're speaking more of our local languages. Okay. That's very important. I don't like the fact that when we are speaking our local languages, we lose our professionalism a lot of times and think because we are speaking our local languages, we can act like yokels and get away with it. Because if you act like a yokel while speaking your local language, it's acceptable. Or if you're reading the news in your local language and you make it look like comedy, mm -hmm. it's acceptable. That's not professional. Mm -hmm. But I think it's something we're going through. Mm -hmm. We will go through it and gradually, gradually, um, uh, as Antifo, baby, I see a Sabita Frache. I can ask why your opinions and inquire being the who we Gradually, all that baby poo will get out of us because mm. we need to understand that music is sweet, comment is free, news is sacred. You don't mess with the news, mm, yeah. you just deliver the news as is without commentary. Yeah. And if there is commentary, it should be stated with clarity. That now we finish the news, now commentary written by so so and so. Mm. Uh, this commentary does not represent the views of City FM. Then yeah. you do your commentary. Mm -hmm. But you have people reading the news yeah. and doing and their commentary, commentary in yeah. the news. Mm -hmm. And that's unacceptable. And you know, th this is something that um, in house regulators yeah. called directors of programs yeah. can handle. Mm -hmm. But the question is do we really have directors of programs or do we have program managers? who have that authority mm -hmm. or who have number one the learning number two the passion and number three the practice because some have the learning because they've gone to school to learn it mm -hmm. but they don't have the practice nor the passion mm. some have the passion but they don't have the learning nor the yeah. practice and some have the practice but they don't have the learning nor the passion mm. so this is it that's mm. where we are Right, you're still watching the Upside Out show. Our guest this evening is the finest for CJ Jaffa. Let's take a break with you right back. Welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show on City TV. We have in studio right here in the couch his royal finest, his royal blackness, <laughs> the KKD. <laughs> what was it? 
I mean, the conversation has been interesting so far. We've talked about growing up, the formative years, education, the media experience, and all that. Quick question. If you hadn't done media, if you hadn't done broadcasting, what would you have done? Brand management, culture and tourism management, or maybe be a judge. Mm. Um, because it's only after I hit 30 that I realized that maybe I could have gone to do law and become a judge. Number one, because I like fairness. Mm. I like honesty. And I, I think judges are very important in every society. If you have corrupt judges, your society will fail. Mm. You know, uh, you know uh, some chap said some time ago, and, and before I say this thing, this chap said, let me say um, this about my son, Dakwa Che Dakwa. His teacher called me once. And his teacher says, King, you need to get Quaker to go into parliament. And I'm like, parliament? Quaker wants to be an investment banker or do something in the creative sector. Says, yeah, but you need to get him to go to parliament. And I'm like, why? He says, Quaker had a very heated argument with one of his colleagues. And um, when I thought it was going to turn into fisticuffs, mm. Quaker looked at his colleague and says, Dexter, some people are wise, but you are otherwise. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Politely, you know, <laughs> insulting. So, so, this other wise person told me some time ago that when God goes to sleep, money controls the world. Oh, for mm. real? And at the time I told him, no. When God takes a nap, judges control the world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Judges. Yes. Because in everything that we do, our first judge is our conscience. Mm -hmm. But where conscience cannot make us do right, if what we do becomes public, then we end up in the face of a mortal judge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if our mortal judges cannot be fair and do right, society falls apart. Mm. So I think judges are very, very important. So aside of media, brands, culture, and tourism, if there was anything else I would do, mm. I'd be a judge. Awesome. In my next life, maybe I'd be a judge. Wow, awesome. I think you'd be a fine judge. Mm. You just mentioned your son. The, the, sorry, that the only one. thing we'll miss is, I mean, Putting a robe on all this finest. No, 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 but outside <laughs> the court, outside the court, no, no, you'll no. still be. Mm -hmm. I'll have the robe redesigned and I'll take that nonsense of that wig they put on their <laughs> head off. And let me repeat it. I'll take that nonsense of that wig they put on their head off. And let me tell you why. You see, every society that claims to be independent mm -hmm. must start asking itself, what do we consume the most? Mm -hmm. Okay. So before you criticize the fact that, okay, but you are in a tailor-made suit, that's why I have a, a design company and we make beautiful clothes. Okay. You know, and I wear a lot of them all the time. Mm. Now, you wanted me to wear a suit, that's why I wear a suit. I don't commit you to be kids. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to come in with a fascinator. No, no, but I, I always, <laughs> You made me wear a suit no, 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 so you didn't no, 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 to no, compliment her no, outfit. So, 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 <laughs> you, you, no, so, so actually, yeah. you know, I was just trying to figure out what would Chrissy wear because, you know, if no, you're going yeah. to meet the KKD, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. even what to wear is a whole day's, yeah. you know, reflection. Exactly. And so, now, come on, Shema Hineman and Nakufi do say, I buy mommy. Oh. <laughs> now I'm going to lobby for you to be on the footprints because for, for upside down, you know, we can't just, yeah. one eye is not enough mm -hmm. to, to break exactly. everything out of yeah. you, you know, because, but for footprints, we can do okay, so part one, it. part two, yeah. part three, and all, so to get the whole so, story. So really, this um, judges thing is very, very important to mm. me. Mm. And I, I really think that people who are judges have a very special place in every society. Yeah. And which is why if I hear of any judge who is corrupt, it breaks my heart. Mm. You know, it is, it is something that you choose. And I think it's not just a job, it's a life. Because mm. you're, you're holding the power of God. Because mm -hmm. you're holding people's destinies Destiny. in your hands. Yeah. But you don't just hold it in your hands. Mm. You use verifiable fact to mm -hmm. commit people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if people who are judges would be honest and fair, would have a better society, would have less corruption, and we would have fewer greedy people seeking to be in power. Great, mm -hmm. that's wisdom. Now, you, okay, so talking about this, are you mm -hmm. thinking of going into politics? No, never. Why? Politics, and yeah, I'm a fed that. There's nothing about politics that pleases mm. me. Mm. You see, I like public service, and there's a difference between public service and 
politics. Yeah. And for the young people um, watching television, please listen attentively. A lot of times when you're listening to your dear brothers, uncles, fathers on television, arguing instead of debating, talking at each other instead of speaking with one another, they'll say things like, Oh, I same with your mom and me and find your politics. I same with your me and find your politics. But that's what you do. You're politicians. And politics, I mean, there's a, a gentleman whose books I read a lot. I'm just trying to learn, you know, trying to see from a perspective that I have never really learned mm. before. And um, his name has just slipped my mind right now. But he says, politics is the art of making your selfish desires mm -hmm. look like the national interest. Yeah. So when you think about it that way, really, there is nothing you want to do in the world that you cannot do with love. Mm. It is only when you want to do evil or when you want to hurt people that you need power. Chrissy, right. are you married? I am happily divorced. Oh, <laughs> really? Are you married? No, I'm not married. I'm divorced. Hey. Happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but, but why? When did you divorce? Um, I filed for divorce on 020202. I had to choose a date that would be easier to remember. You have something else. <laughs> Why? No, no, because when so I this was married, February 2nd, 2002. Yeah. Oh, a so. palindromic date. <laughs> and I remember, you know, because you have, you know, dates are kind of funny. So mm. I married my wife on her birthday. So okay. that way I can't forget. Mm. You know. And you have two children. Yeah, only two. Okay. Ohima and. Uh, uh, Kweku Dakwa Chei Dakwa. And Ohima Sukwa Chei Dakwa. Interesting. No, no slave I'm, names. Well, I'm going <laughs> to ask you mm -hmm. um, something, you yeah. know. Go ahead. For my own curiosity. Yeah. I don't know how you look at no, it. No, go ahead. Ask. Right. So, um, about seven years ago, mm -hmm. there was this issue in the news. Which one? About a red case and everything. Oh, it was a lie. No, no, so, so oh, at, the end of, at the end of <laughs> the, <laughs> the whole trial, like, I don't know if I say trial and court issues mm. at they all. They never tried it. The yes. trial never begun. So, so at what point did we know that it was thrown out? It was a lie. Or mm -hmm. maybe a girl. Now, I could just be question. I'm a fine boy at the same. No bad in me, We're standing together on a balcony having a conversation. And I've left them on the balcony, gone to a bathroom before I go down to a fashion show. Mm -hmm. So, Benny Blanco has parted his face. Okay. He's come, oh, boss, I've left. Benny calls me boss just mm. because I'm his big brother, yeah. not because I'm his boss. Yeah. You know, I've left the powder on the sink. And, you know, it's a, it's a suite in the beautiful African region. So, I leave two ladies and my younger cousin, Kofi Ochiridako, yeah. on the balcony. I'd even crack the joke about how, you know, investment bankers in Kensington, where I live, they chop people's money and then when they get found out, they jump you know, and, and kill themselves. Yeah. And it was a lovely Like you having flashbacks. <laughs> and it was a lovely Arefe. Mm -hmm. You know, so I get my head out, I wipe my head, and we kiss. And we make love. And when we finish, she takes my Prada money bag and she carries it. It's all on CCTV still. So what happened? No, no, no. So I'm sh this young chap who has this thing they call a goat face. Or what do they call it? The beard the goatee? This thing? The beard gang. Uh, he's not a beard gang. It's, so like it's a a, uh, trying to copy the Al Qaeda thing, you know. <laughs> I think he was walking with the lady. So he goes to, now we learn, he goes to the Legon police station mm -hmm. to go and make a rape case. Then he said, ah, how can a man make a rape case? If you have a rape case, let the woman come and report yeah. the case. So he leaves there and then he drives over. If anybody knows him, go and find him. He, they say his name is Kofiche. And at the time, he was even making an effort oh, to look like my son. Yeah. But he's an idiot. You know, so he leaves there. And then he goes to airport police station and he finds a dummy at the police station. I don't know whether he gives him money. And the guy helps him to make a case without the lady's statement. Wow. So the lady never had a statement. And let me say this now here. My lawyer, his name is Gary Nimaku. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My lawyers were Tony Forson, Gary Nimaku. And my dear brother, Asante Bedi oh, right. Gary Nimaku wrote to the prosecutor mm -hmm. to ask, saying, you gave us documents, but we have never seen the complainant statement. Can we have it? Mm. There was none? The, 
the prosecutor called Gary Nimakulata to say, oh, but you know this thing, it was political. Uh, yeah, there was no statement from the girl. Wow. This is the country we live in. Wow. He's now married to her lovely white older man abroad. Oh, awesome. Mm. Nice girl. Are we choose to be more person on any day? Are you still in touch with her? No, we're not in touch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because your voice has a sound. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, 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 are you saying with a with a smile? Man, don't worry. Man, don't worry. <laughs> no, but you know, your your younger brother was here, um, right in the seat. Mm -hmm. You are. Uh -huh. Kofi was here. Uh, and I Kofi's asked Kofi, my cousin, my younger cousin. Yeah. Yes. And I asked Kofi, Kofi, I'm not going to go into details of yeah. this issue, but mm. what is your relationship with Kofi like? Kofi and he said you are Kofi awesome. Kofi failed in a very abysmal way on mm -hmm. this particular issue. Mm -hmm. That room I was in, I did not even make love to the girl in the bedroom. I was standing in the bathroom. I have one bad knee. The knee was healing, so I had stopped using my crutches, okay. and I wasn't even using a walking cane. Okay. But sir, 17 to 18 minutes of sex that we had in Inyinana, it was <laughs> How do you rape somebody I don't question some man from where is that? Rape is not Look, women choose who they want to <laughs> lay with. Don't make it always look like mm. women are snails mm -hmm. who lie by the roadside mm. and then men just pick them up or they are goats and we mm. throw a lasso onto their, their neck necks and drag yeah. them. Women choose, look, mm. some choose sportsmen. Mm -hmm. Some choose men who will buy them. Mm. And some choose men who will buy them things. Some choose intelligent men. Mm -hmm. Some choose men who have just gotten into power. Yeah. So if you're a politician and you've just made it into parliament, be wary of those women who all of a sudden have become available to you. Mm -hmm. They don't love you. They love the position you are in. Right. When power changes, right. the next guy in your position the of will have yeah. the same exactly. women. Now, this is yeah. wisdom. We know very well that we see you are the ladies' man. You I'm know. Not. Oh, no, 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 you are. Don't say that. So? And it's not true. I know what you're saying. Uh, so, no, because girls like you. I uh, know ladies' man. I because if, if, if I mean we gravitate towards you and only ladies man and I had a chest one out bro for no because even in our conversation you've already said that you don't go chasing women me mm -hmm. yet uh huh it is a ma be brave about why I said chess eh yeah same what is it about you I mean what makes you that force of attraction maybe I'm a tune tune. Mm. Well, I think the way you carry yourself also plays a, mm -hmm. a huge no, I, role. I, I like people. Yes, yeah. yes. I, li I genuinely like people. Yeah. You know, today when I got here, you know, the gentleman and lady in pink. Yes. Yeah. You know, I stopped to chat with them and they were such pleasant people. Yeah. Right. You know, and um, got to know their names. And interestingly, when I asked them their name, the guy asked me, do you want my African name or my English name? Because <laughs> I think he's heard me say over exactly. and over again yeah. that yeah. Yeah. your African yeah, name yeah. is your royal name uh -huh. and your uh -huh. English or foreign uh -huh. name is your slave name. Right. So we just laughed about it. Mm. And I think when you genuinely show an interest in people, mm. they reciprocate it. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. You know, when, in our course of our conversation, you mentioned your son. Yeah. And then we we're talking mm. about he being in school and his teacher thinking he should go into yeah. um, <laughs> politics, politics uh, and stuff like that. <laughs> but you know, there was also a very sensitive issue that came out. You know, well, I'm saying right? sensitive because of where we come from. Mm. I'm sure your son lives in England. Yeah. And yeah. in England, you know, it's, it's a kind of free for yeah. all. You, you decide to do whatever you want to do with Everywhere your life. Everywhere in the world is free for all. But <laughs> here, you know, mm -hmm. certain topics, exactly. we, we, we can't even openly talk about it. Because, we are, because we are hypocritical. Well, you people. can't take that from us, but that's what makes us who we are <laughs> yeah. as a people, you know. Your son came in and his sexual orientation was... Yeah, he said, he said um, he's not straight and that um, he's gay. And I said, well, if that's what you are. I mean, I would prefer for you to be straight, but if that's what you really feel you are, you're still my son and I love you. But as an African father, mm. how did you take this? What did this mean to you? You know, just like it would mean to any good human being, you know, we all make certain choices in life. Mm -hmm. There are things we know very much about and things we don't. Mm -hmm. And I still don't understand this gay, lesbian, transgender thing mm -hmm. because... I'm a straight man, I'm only attracted to women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I still cannot understand how some women are attracted to women mm -hmm. or some men are attracted to men. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to learn what exactly it is. Mm -hmm. But whilst I'm trying to learn about it, mm -hmm. I am not judgmental on people. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say because I don't do what you do, mm -hmm. you should be condemned. I don't drink. Mm -hmm. I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying because I don't drink or smoke, I'm going to condemn those who do. Mm -hmm. I don't take bribes. I've never taken a bribe in my life. Okay. I'm not going to say because I don't take bribes, I should, we should condemn everybody who does. But I find it very hypocritical in our society the way some people are so vitriolic when it comes to the subject of the gay and transgender community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, like, well, if somebody has stolen government money, that's not a problem. But if somebody is gay, that's a problem. Look, everybody has their way of worshiping who they worship. Yeah. Same one God. Some people say God told them, you can only have one woman. Mm -hmm. If you marry two, it's a horrible sin. Yeah. Mm. Some people also say, you can marry four women. Mm -hmm. If you marry one, it's just a waste of space. Yeah. Now, one of those people says, you must never drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. One of them says, it is okay to drink alcohol. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm really getting confused what mm -hmm. exactly it is that we are looking for as human beings. Mm -hmm. Every society has its mores, its rules, and its laws. Let's make sensible laws. Let's live by the sensible laws. But whilst we abide by those laws, let us not be so unkind nor stupid that we go attacking people who are living via truth. Mm. But one thing I know for certain, my child is my child. I will love my child till the day I die. My love for my child is not contingent on the thoughts of any masses. Mm. My love for my parents is not contingent on the thoughts of any masses. Mm. My love for my country is not contingent on the thoughts of any masses. However, make your laws. Mm -hmm. Make people obey the laws. But make sure your laws are kind and sensible. That's all. Mm. So let me read this to you. King Kwesiche Dakwa is the managing director of the finest media, Brands and Culture Limited, Heritage Apparel, and founder of the Che Dakwa Foundation for Culture and Communication, a not-for-profit organization for training and mentorship in media, arts, culture, and tourism, brand building, etiquette, and public communication. Exactly. That's me. How are you able to do all these things? Yeah, because you, you won't believe it, but every week I have a minimum of 12 people come through. Uh -huh. People who want to start some enterprise in the culture and tourism space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the culture and tourism space, we have, you know, presenting. We have poetry. And I'm glad you're, you're, you've joined our poetry for 10 <laughs> Yes. Uh, we have music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have baking. Mm -hmm. We have uh, millinery, the people who make yeah. your hats and your yes. fascinators. Fashion design. And I... I mentor them on these things and mm -hmm. sometimes I spend some money too, okay. you know, because you want people to be able to get independent. Mm. Uh, we live in a very difficult economy where a good number of people must take their destiny into their own hands mm -hmm. because the government can't do much really. Mm. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, we, we have had government upon government that has placed wants over needs. Mm. I mean, right now as we're speaking, there is a building somewhere in Kumasi which is supposed to have been built for housing the president and the vice president when yeah. they go to Kumasi, mm -hmm. which is just going to waste. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think of the fact that people actually drive to the front of a hospital where they can't find the bed, yeah. Yeah. but we can go and build such a house somewhere mm -hmm. which is not being used and which is going to waste, mm -hmm. you have no doubt that we either didn't do any needs assessment or we placed our wants before our needs. Mm -hmm. And any society which places their wants before their needs will become a society which says the security of the president and his people are very important and forget about the security of the children, mm -hmm. the vulnerable, and the old age pensioner. This is wisdom. <laughs> Kwesi Che yeah. Dakwa, the yeah. Dakwa. Kwesi, 
Thank you very much. It I think it's, it, it's been a Miss great conversation. <laughs> On that or don't note, I yes. think we can wrap up. We can, we can, we can, we can. It's been an awesome conversation, yeah, yeah, you know, on the great. Upside Out show. I guess has been his royal blackness, Kwesi Che mm. Dakwa, the finest. Yep. Thank you very much for joining us once again on Upside Down, proudly brought to you by Vodafone. Together we can. My name is Premier Diname. And mine is Nanatifu Obwati. And my name is Dakwa, Kwesi Che Dakwa. Yes.